everybody and welcome back to my channel and what are we going to be up to today apart from admiring this gorgeous Leodoro sweet memory that took forever to open and now it's just pop like popcorn blooms opening one after the other oh and it smells so good so I'm going to just introduce what we're going to do in this video right next to her because of that fragrance and here on the left you can see my two Orangus. They have been on the mount for two years. They have actually been blooming very well. However, when it comes to root growth, it does stall, even though I keep them constantly moist. And I would like to try something different. These are not difficult orchids to come by and by no means am I suggesting it's okay to kill an orchid because there's more. No, definitely not. But I know that these could do better and I want to try and see if I can make them do better. Despite their pendant growing habit, I am going to pot these up because I have new root growth starting. Let me see, maybe that's not as good. I have new root growth starting on my Mr. Sidii. You can see it in there, I think. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not, but there is a new growth starting and um, I want to take advantage of that because you can see that this growth here extended itself and it's now stopping. This one is stopping. I had one in the back that also stopped. So that has to stop. <laughs> The root drying off, that has to stop. And here's my fastuosa. And while I'm gonna be fiddling around, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna take it off the mount because look at those two roots there. Yeah, three actually. Yeah, I don't want them to stop, they're doing well. It's only gonna get hotter and drier from here on in. And even though I did well for two years in this method, the bigger the orchids get, the more demanding of moisture they will become as well. So I'm not just gonna rest on my laurels and say, hey, hey, they bloom, they're doing fine. I have to take into consideration what are they gonna do growth-wise this year and how are they going to be able to survive the need for additional moisture. And if I cannot provide it, now it's getting hotter, the wind is getting drier, then I have to th rethink my strategy. So that is what we are going to do today. Right, so we are back outside and I want to free up these two pots from the sad little ones. These are my favorite pots after all and if they're not doing well then I would like to free these pots up for orchids that I would like to do well in them. So what we're going to do first is remove these from their pots and then stuff them into some sphagnum moss and hopefully we can get them established in another way. And if not, then at least we try. So my Volcanica is doing a little bit better, I can see. I have some roots. So that's good. And what I use are these little pots here for the mozzarella salad balls that you can get in your supermarket. These are my net pots. <laughs> Wash them out and I have a great little net pot that I don't need to go shopping for. Despite the fact that nurseries do provide a lot of net pots, this for me is perfect. So I'm going to just fill in a bit of sphagnum moss on the bottom and see if these will pull through. And if not, then at least I tried. And I can quite happily say, oops, they are not for me. And I say that with a little pinch of salt, because after two years, you know, something's got to be done. As much as I hate moving and switching around, but two years, yeah, that's quite a good time to assess whether something's working or not. And clearly, it's not. So I want those little white pots. I prefer those little white pots 
all my orchids that are doing well and that is why we're going to do it this way and see what happens. There's one. Maybe a little bit more in here. And I'll be back because I need more sphagnum moss. I never thought these little pots would take so much sphagnum moss. That's quite impressive. Right. Here we are. Soak it up. Where did I put my tag? You are over here. There you go. Push comes to shove. I can also always hang these guys up in the winter. Base coat. And the fact I'm now taking two mounts off, that means I'm using real estate. So these guys I can always hang up in winter if need be. Perfect. Now let's take the next one. My Maxillaria chrysanthemum, back in the day from Orient Orchidea. And there's not much to show for either. This is at least two and a half years with me. So we're going to do exactly the same. And put it into its own little knot pot. Ooh, those birds are very, very cheerful. Love it. Why do I bother with this little guy? Because they're still green. Just can't throw anything away that's got green on it. Even when I cut garden plants or something, oh, it just breaks my heart to put them on a pile, all the branches and all that stuff. You know, if there's life in it, I struggle with that. So I don't, I can't do it. In some ways I wish it would just die already, but no. While it's still got green, I will keep trying. Alrighty then. Maxillaria chrysanthemum. Let's go. Let's grow. Let's see what happens. Again, I can hang this up in winter if I'm running out of real estate. Alrighty, I'm going to put these inside. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, we're back. So I've just washed out and sterilized these two little pots and their little masks. And what I'm going to do is probably only need one of them because the roots on the Mr. City Eye, they are quite long. But let's start tentatively with Fastuosa and get it into the little pot. You see, these needed to be remossed anyway. This would be like the second time this year that I would have done it, which is not a problem, honestly. I love, I love fiddling with my orchids, but the Mr. City Eye, for example, is so touchy-feely when it comes to messing with the, or with the roots. And that's why I love my little mounts because of what you just saw. Nothing sticks to anything. There's no ripping of the roots. So yeah, anyway, let's see if I can make it better for these guys because I want them to grow bigger, of course, but I also need them to be able to survive and sustain themselves. These little mounts I'm going to use again. I'm just gonna stuff them into the leka that I've just poured out and boil them together with the leka and then they're sterilized. 
Now let's see little guy, what have we got? I'm very tempted to not cut anything off, but here we go. This one's a bit ridiculous, so we'll take this one off. That one is really, really bad. So is this little short one. And the other ones I'm just gonna leave for anchoring purposes, as well as in the hope that some may branch, because they're not bad roots, but it's these guys I'm really interested in. All right, come on in. Come on in. New home is awaiting. I'm gonna try and talk a little bit louder now because it can be a bit noisy. Or maybe I can do it this way. Aha, maybe that was better. All right, so on the bottom of my little pot here, I've put leka. But because of the way these roots are, they're so fine, and I do believe they want more moisture, I am now going to add ceramus into the pot. There are still some shells in there from when I was mixing the ceramus with shells and for the calcium. All right, before we go ahead, see? Still got some shells in there. They don't hurt, they don't harm. Always check where the holes are. Keep the holes to the back. And yes, little one, there goes your pendant. Or oh, maybe not. Maybe I can do it like this. I was gonna say, there goes your pendant nature. Yeah, no, I have to do it like this to get those roots down in there. All right, as a support, so it doesn't jiggle around, I'm leaving the little orchid a little bit lower in the pot so that it has very minimal room of movement and the roots are already touching the ceramus in the bottom there. I hope you can see that. So the roots are already touching, so that's why I'm going to leave her, just like that. If eventually she gets established, and I say if, because with orangus it's always tricky. I've never seen an orangus allowed like to be messed with as minimal as we've done it today. They're like going to go really, and then salt and possibly go downhill. And you're like, okay, I wish I'd never done that. My intentions are good though. My intentions are good. So I have my new roots buried. I also have a leaf buried, don't want that. Ooh, this is fiddly. This is fiddly. So I'm going to hold her a little bit like that, because I can always rest her again. There's another root in the back. There we go. You like my little scoop? <sighs> oh, one day I'm going to get myself one of the kitty beach bucket accessories. These little scoops from the beach buckets of the babies, the toddlers, they would be awesome. I wouldn't be here all day. All right. That's quite satisfactory for my liking. There's still one root that is long enough, but still poking out, so we're going to take care of that in the back here, and then cover these guys. It is surprising how these little creatures enjoy their moisture. I find it extremely surprising. So we're going to give it to her and hope that as she gets bigger, she will appreciate the additional sustenance. Okay, for now, that's how I'm gonna leave it. And I will face her. If the sun's coming from this direction, I'm going to face her in the opposite direction so that she doesn't start leaning into the pot. That's my plan. So she'll be facing the window with her back towards the window. I want her to be able to go upright, and if she then decides to curve, that's okay. But not from Jump Street. Have we done everything right? The tag can go where it belongs. Always, for me, always aligned with the back of the holes. This is my margin. This is how I know how I've positioned my orchid. 
and when I'm transporting her, even though she has a mask, I'm not messing around and spilling the water out of the holes. Just say, I'm walking to the kitchen, I'll always be able to turn it this way without having to look, where are the holes, where are the holes? Because I mark it where the label is. And then, one quick, quick fill with fertilized water up to 300 ppm. There was minimal, minimal root intervention here. So I'm not going to consider if there was any damage at all as I pulled it off. So we have black on the bottom and ceramics on the top. And please, 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 little one, I mean well, I mean well. I really want you to do better. Alrighty, one down. Let's look at you. And this Orangus Mr. Sidi is a fantastic bloomer. It's done two spikes for me in all the years that I've had it. Never an issue. Never. The only thing that it did do at the beginning of the year, which I was so disappointed because I had a beautiful bushy plant, when I remossed it in January, as you can see, I didn't need to take it off the mount. All I did was pick out the old moss, took off the old fish, where, fish line here, and then all I did was put new moss on. I didn't even move the plant, and it promptly dumped four leaves on me. Four leaves! I couldn't believe it. I'm like, really? So now I am, of course, quite hesitant about doing this and hoping that it's the right thing. But I want to give it a try because it is growing, it has grown this new leaf so far and it's growing this one as well. And now maybe you can see the root. So I keep asking you because I can't see the screen. Clearly in my other videos I was doing the FaceTime version and just flipped the screen around and everything was opposite. It was quite bizarre. So I'm either wasting my time filming something that nobody can see because now I've got the screen the proper way to see if that works better and if not then I will tell you the story after I've done everything <laughs> but you see this one dumped four leaves and I never moved it off the mount and this is the beauty of these mounts oh I'm gonna miss it but needs must in my opinion and you see that these roots are quite long so it can't go into my little pot what I'm going to do it's gonna look funky for a few months maybe a year but what I'm going to do is put it into my long pots which I had actually allocated for my neos but now that we are in this situation my Mr. City Eye is worthy of a long pot so we've got the holes in the back and I'm going to position her just like the other Oranga so I don't confuse myself. Okay, this is going to get loud because now I can't put my hand in. I have her in a great position in my hand, so sorry. All right, I've just filled Lekka up to where the whole line is, not more, because what I'm going to do is put her in before I judge any more height. I do want a little bit more lecker on the bottom because these roots, yes, I've kept them very wet, but by no means do I think they're ceramus worthy just yet. And when I say worthy, I mean as in can they handle it. So I'm going to add with a little, fill up with a little bit more lecker. Okay, little one, please, please grow, please, I'm trying, I want to do better for you. All right, don't hate me. And this one I'm going to lean a little bit because she has enough stability in the pot. A little bit more lecker. And now I just need to tap that into place a little bit. This is going to be update central, I promise you because I am very, very tentatively curious, I must say tentative, because I used to love looking at them every day because they were doing so well. 
And maybe now, what I'm doing now, it's just gonna go downhill. And then as I said in the beginning, it's not like I don't mind because, hey, they're readily available. They're not that hard to find. I don't want to, I'm not doing this to, to make them go downhill. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm doing this because I want them to do much better as they grow bigger. The hot air is coming and maybe the bloom spike dumped, made the leaves dump the roots because there wasn't enough humidity or moisture in their roots. All these factors and equations are kind of what I'm, my thought process is. Okay, are you gonna stay down? Sorry why I fiddle around with this. Thank you for watching, for sticking around. I would like this root to go down because it has a growing root tip, which is drying out. That's a bummer, and that's another reason they are drying out. Despite how moth, how wet I keep the moss, and I don't, I don't like it. There's a lot of energy that goes into growing roots. Why should I risk them losing their roots? Okay, fine. You get lecker. That works it up. You're not staying down, so now I have enough. I have enough humidity on the roots. Now I'm going to put lecker on to add some weight. Bush comes to shove. If I see any more of this nonsense, I'm going to rearrange her, but I don't want to. I want to get this right now. There's a root. The little new root is touching ceramus, which is sometimes not a good thing. So we'll move that out of the way because ceramus is very drying. And if for some reason I miss the fact that the wind has dried the surface out too much, then I'll lose that root tip. So that's what we're going to do now, is just fill around in the bottom there. I don't think I need my tweezers. I think we can do this. Still watching that one root that wants to grow upwards. And that's not gonna happen. I've gotta keep an eye on that. My factor here, my marker, will be the this leaf. And of course all the others, but mainly this leaf. See how it does. Alright. Let's lift you up. Let's see what happens when we pat you down. See? I don't want that. I'll be right back. Okay. You're gonna be stubborn? Well, you've met your match. You've met your match. I'm here. I can be stubborn too. This is what we're gonna do. Protect that root tip there. And then, cloth. I said cloth. Hey, hey. There we go. All right, these guys, they're still valuable. They just haven't grown. So it's trying. Orangas normally do not extend their roots. Once they've dried off, they've dried off. And in that case, I just find like, no, we need to keep this going. And then, we're gonna put a plate underneath. we're going to put the tag and the holes are the mark. There we go. No. The beauties of potting up outside, my daughter has the kitchen to herself. Normally I always stop doing what I'm doing so that I'm not in her way. But in this case, look, she's in the kitchen and I'm here. And it's like like it's not like oh excuse me excuse me <laughs> all right so let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that I made the right call with these two orangus you see how quickly the surface dries up here I may need to put some sphagnum moss around it 
but time will tell. Just one little final thing. I'm just going to wipe down the leaves. I have some uh, very, very dilute insecticide wash on my rag and my bowl here. And I just wipe down the leaves a little bit because these are not going to be facing the sun or the light. They never are in the sun anyway, the light. And uh, they're going to have to find their way and turn the plant around. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. I hope it wasn't too long, too winded, and that my editing is getting a bit better so you don't have to struggle through me ooming and aahing and doing whatever. I really appreciate it. Let's keep an eye on these guys. Definitely there will be updates. Either way, there will be updates, good or bad. Take care, everybody. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.